Hi, this is the third of the data visualization with the ggplot uh, videos that I'm doing. This is part of my uh, robust tools uh, series. Um, hopefully you're following on from the previous one, so I won't waste your time with additional introductions and instead jump straight into where we were up to. So we're working inside this RStudio Cloud project. So that's this here. I would normally click on this link, but instead uh, I will just go Alt and over here and go back to where we left things at the end of the previous one. So I promised last time that I would show you how to set this up so that uh, you can change the locations of things within our studio. Like at the moment, I can see what's in this plot just fine, uh, but you annoyingly will have my head in the way. And as much as I like having my head, uh, it's probably that you don't really want it there in the middle of your in the middle of your screen. So what we're going to do is go over here into the tools menu. So we're going to go under here and go under global options. And there are a whole lot of things here about RStudio that we can customize. And I'm going to use this as an excuse to customize a couple of things besides the one that I want to. First off, let's over here it says workspace, uh, restore.r data into workspace at startup. I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to, on the over here where it says save workspace to .r data on exit, I'm going to change that to never. Um, this is generally good practice. Later on uh, I will explain why, but the short answer is you should be in charge of what gets loaded into R and you should be uh, in charge of what gets saved uh, from R. Don't leave it to, for R to do it automatically. That's the, the reason for that. Um, so we'll go apply to change those settings. That won't do anything uh, of particular note. Like we don't need, it won't change anything for this uh, series is what I mean. Okay, let's go back to the thing we actually wanted to uh, change here is the pane layout. Okay, so on my left, the, each of these quadrants says uh, refers to the the contents of each of the um, uh, the four quadrants in the R Studio uh, panel. What I'm going to do is organize it so that connections, which I will never be using, uh, is in the bottom left, bottom right. Um, and we're just going to move things like uh, viewer and we'll move packages and plots and files. So we're going to move those ones. Oh, we might as well move help as well. Help. Apparently we're not going to move help. Oh, it doesn't like that. Okay, apparently there's a limit to the number of things we can do. All right, going to leave... Um, I think we'll, I'll move viewer. I had no idea though. I just discovered something. There's a limit to the number of panels you can cram into one spot. Okay, let's put the help back up here then. There we go. So when I do click on uh, apply now, you can see in the background something changed. Let's click OK to make this window go away. Now what we've got is I have moved uh, a whole lot of, like all of the panes that I was clicking on before have been um, moved up into the top uh, left, top right. I'm not good with left, uh, left and right. I never have been. I'm left-handed. I'm going to blame that. Um, <laughs> okay. There's no substantial reason to do this. Some people have individual preferences. I don't. The only reason I'm doing this is just so that this little region on the bottom right is now filled with some RStudio content that we're not going to be using and so I can leave my face there without uh, it getting in the way of the rest of the video. Okay, let's go back to the thing we actually cared about, plots. We're drawing plots. So let's give it about that much room. I think that should be okay. Alright, so I'll just re as a refresher we'll clear that clear the plots and if I wanted to run this I would go click on source or instead of actually clicking on it I'm just going to go control shift s to run the whole thing that gives us our picture okay 
All of that so far has been mechanics of using RStudio. Let's go back to this. This was the command ggplot data equals mpg plus g on point mapping blah 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 blah. Let's go back now to the slides. See we are slowly making progress. Uh, and start talking about exactly what was going on in these commands. Maybe we will? There we go! Okay. So, this is a, my uh, attempt to visually describe what we've done. There was a series of uh, commands that we took and we built up a plot bit by bit. So we started out by going ggplot data equals mpeg and on its own, all that that does is draw that background. Like there's a, there's a um, it tells R, yes, there's going to be a plot, but we don't know what's going to go on it yet. So then later, we added a G on point mapping equals blah, 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 blah. Adding the G on point adds another uh, piece of information. I mean, I'm, I am lying a tiny little bit when I say that each of these things is a layer. There's a slightly more technical definition that, quite frankly, we are going to ignore for this class. So we had our initial layer, which had nothing in it. Then over the top, we add these uh, dot points and the dot points you can think of as another layer and we could keep adding layers if we really wanted to. The particular details of how that those points are laid out are specified by the mapping and the mapping was where we said x equals dispel, y equals highway and that's the way that we tell R which things are now data uh, and those are the ones that I've highlighted with blue here so the HWY and Dispel uh, there those are things in our data set in our MPEG data set and Y and X are aesthetics they are aspects to the plot uh, that need to be uh, mapped onto something in our data so as a reminder those variables correspond to um, engine displacement liter versus miles per gallon for highway driving. So that's the logic of what we just did. This is how that plays out in the code that we created and this was the ggplot that we uh, had as our output. So what I typically get people to do in my class at this point is to go back to this plot and this code and even though you're not programmers yet, like this is intended for complete novices, you have no idea of what to do, but I'm going to ask you to try and just guess how to solve a bunch of problems. And what I find doing this in the classroom is that people have okay intuitions. Um, people don't, you won't be able to work out the answers to all of these things on your own, but I'm going to pretend that you've stopped and spent, you know, a couple of minutes thinking about each of these questions. So how do you, how would you show the city mileage as the Y value? So rather than what is currently the Y value. How could we plot the manufacture year as the X value? How could I instead show the number of cylinders as the color? That's a slightly harder question. As an even harder question, what would be required to add a regression line onto this instead of the dot points? Now, I have not given you enough uh, information to actually solve these things, but take a moment to try and think about them and work out what that might entail. And then I'm going to pretend that you've paused the video, spent a bit of time and then come back. So I will just stop that and move on to the next bit. Hi! Okay, this was uh, me um, going through the process of creating the artwork that uh, you would have just been looking at. It's not very exciting. Okay, let's have a, let, let's unpack all of that a little bit further and in doing so let's see if we can answer the, the questions that we asked ourselves in the previous exercise. What we're trying to do here is construct what are called aesthetic mappings. So um, the mappings, sorry, <laughs> there again. let's start with this thought, right? The plot, this plot uses MPG, miles per gallon, as the data, and the um, MPG data set contains variables. So if you remember back, I will actually make it so that you don't have to remember, I will show you. I'll go Control L to clear the screen, MPG, this was the data set, I will just bring that up there. Is this 
data set contains these different variables, right? So there are a whole bunch of variables inside MPG. Okay, so the variable MPG contains a bunch of uh, variables of its own. So the data are variables. But anyway, the MPG data contains variables. So highway, city, decibel, year, those and, and others. The plot is a kind of abstract object, right, that has features or characteristics that could be uh, informative about something in the data. And those information bearing components are called aesthetics. So the X coordinate could bear, could carry information, so that's an aesthetic. The Y coordinate could carry information, that makes an aesthetic. But you could also, if you want, use the color of a dot as an aesthetic, and that would obviously be called color. You could use the size of a dot as an aesthetic, and that would be called size. There are fill aesthetics, there are um, there are lots of aesthetics. Uh, you don't need to know all of them. We'll introduce them as we go. So essentially we've got these things floating around. When we create a mapping, what we are doing is telling R which parts of the data should be mapped onto which parts of the plot. That's our aesthetic mapping and that's what that AES uh, bit is doing. So when I say, when I type in AES x equals dispel y equals highway, I am doing this. So the first part says, hey, map the x coordinate onto the dispel value, map the y coordinate onto the uh, highway mileage. So what I could do if I wanted to, not that I ever do this in real life, but you could just grab that section of code and just run it on its own. And what that would show you is something like this. Hey, AS x equals dispel y equals high is an aesthetic mapping. It is a way of uh, mapping data and plot onto each other. It is fundamentally about what characteristics of the data should be mapped onto what characteristics of the plot. Okay. That's the idea behind aesthetics. So let's go and see if we can answer one of those questions we asked ourselves. Can we add color to this plot here? You should be able to, I hope, work out the answer from what I've just said. You probably thought about it before, but if I add, if I just go comma, color equals uh, CYL, I get colored output. Now at this point, I want to highlight two things. Firstly, um, ggplot is one of the few things out there that don't that does uh, an okay job of remembering the difference between UK spelling and US spelling. It can handle both. You can spell color uh, incorrectly, as I've done here on the left, as the Americans uh, do, or you could spell it correctly with a U, as I've done on the right, uh, you know, as, as a proper Australian uh, would do. Um, and ggplot uh, is polite enough to be able to handle both versions. In general, though, in programming we tend to try and use US spelling. But this is one where it's actually nice. The other thing I want to call attention to is a kind of substantive thing in this plot. The, um, I'm not going to try and fix it right now, but this plot is bad. Um, it's bad for all sorts of reasons, but the main one is that, notice that on the right hand side here, it's got this continuous shade of blue for the number of cylinders in an engine, and it draws them on on the plot like that. And that's fine up to a point like you can read it and go, oh okay, then these light points here must be like eight cylinders and over here the dark points over here must be like four cylinders or something. But the continuous shading kind of strongly implies that it's possible to have a car with 3.24 cylinders and I will be the first to admit I don't know much about cars but I don't understand how you can have 3.56 cylinders in an engine. So you would probably, when doing this in real life, want to change this plot. And I'm mentioning this now to foreshadow the fact that there are ways in which you can control exactly that kind of uh, property to your output, but we're not going to do that right now. Instead, we're just going to ignore that eyesore and move on. So, this is where in my class I would say, uh, code along with me, uh, and I would say, okay, let's take the uh, MPG data, um, recreate the last plot, um, change the map variables, play around with, with them, um, 
and see if you can play around with some different aesthetics and see what kind of plots will you can come up with. And that is as good a point uh, as any to say, go do that one yourself. Um, in the next video, I'll pick up and I'll actually do that exercise. Okay, I'll stop now. Probably. Wait a minute. What's the thing to stop this? I know how to stop this. I don't know what I'm doing.